this is Tara Sullivan, Sully Stitches on Floss Tube. Um, this is my second video about cross stitch. Um, it is Thursday, February the 1st. Can't believe it's already February. Um, so again, this is a floss tube about my cross stitch, my love of cross stitch. You know, thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming back. If you've watched my first video, I really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to jump into some stuff I've been doing the last couple weeks, uh, give you some information. So first, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who shouted me out on Instagram, on floss tube, you know, left me so much encouragement. Um, it, it was overwhelming and amazing. Um, you know, so many of you subscribed, um, so many had such great comments, um, and I felt, you know, just so supported and happy filming again. So I really do appreciate the encouragement. Uh, I get a little nervous when the camera comes on. I'm sure you guys can tell, but it'll get better, you know, with time, it'll get better. <laughs> That's what everybody keeps telling me. But, um, I did want to mention a few Instagrammers and floss tubes. Uh, so, uh, Sweetwater Stitcher, Jessica. Uh, Liz the Wandering Stitcher, Slamming the Screen Door, um, the Purple Stitcher, my friend Jen, Brenda and the Serial Starter, Laura, uh, Carol Saltbox Stitcher, and Stug Harbor Crafts, Deb and Calf. So thank you guys again for mentioning me, for encouraging people to watch me. It, it's really wonderful to have the support of the community. So last video, I didn't really say anything about me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a a dumb moment. So, um, uh, so again, my name is Tara Sullivan. I am from Greenville, South Carolina. So Greenville is in the upper part of the state. We call it the upstate. Um, and it's right in between like Charlotte and Atlanta, hour and a half Charlotte, hour and a half to Atlanta. We're right smack in the middle. We're 45 minutes to Asheville. We're three hours from the beach. Um, it's a great location, beautiful, beautiful weather, um, beautiful downtown. Uh, so, I am an IT manager by trade. I do information technology. Um, I've been in IT since 1998, so you do the math. I don't want to, it's scary. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's, you know, my by trade. Most days I love it. Um, it. It can be frustrating just like any job. I think we all, we all work, you know, we work to live, not live to work. So um, my happy place is when I can come stitch, I can relax and stitch, um, it's how I, just kind of decompress at the end of the day. Um, I do a lot of stitching at night. I do stitching on the weekends. Um, unfortunately, that's really about the only time I get to stitch. Um, but uh, let's see what else. I am not married. I have no children. Um, that's why I can stitch at night and on the weekends. Um, but uh, I have a lot of nieces and nephews that all live around me. My family all lives around me. Um, I'm, I was born and raised in Greenville in a little town called Mall in South Carolina. Went to Mall in high school, go Mavs. Um, so, you know, that's just a little bit about me. I've been, I think I learned to stitch when I was 14. I got to put this pin down before I cook because I'll drive y'all crazy. I learned to stitch when I was around 14. Um, my up the street neighbor taught me and my mother both how to stitch. And, um, my mother's not really good at sitting still. So, she kind of did a little bit of it and then put it down. And so I took my project, did my project, I took her project, did her project, and then kind of happened from there. I didn't stitch for a long time through high school and college. And then um, probably as about 25, we have a local needle workshop in town called Pandas Crossing. Uh, they did a linen class and it was Elizabeth design. I'll show you guys sometime, but it was Elizabeth design, four seasons. Um, it had a bunch of specialty stitches in it on linen. Um, so I did that and I just fell in love with stitching again, you know, by then like fat, you know, variegated thread was coming out, variegated fabric, um, all the beautiful things that we love. Um, and so I just really got seriously hooked again. And I really have not stopped stitching since then. Um, I'll go through little periods where I may stop for a couple of weeks, but very, very rarely. It was usually when I was just traveling. Um, I used to travel a lot for work. I don't anymore since COVID. Um, so that's kind of come to a halt. Um, so, which is nice because I have more time, um, you know, around my house, around my family. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Those are really the big things about me. I have been fortunate enough to go to a lot of retreats. Um, I met wonderful people at those retreats. Um, I have a local shop, like I said. We do stitch groups here locally. 
which is nice. And I'll talk about some of that and like what's been going on the last two weeks. And then um, I do have fortunately been able to go to market several times in the past. So um, I've been three or four times to market with my local shop, um, which is a lot of fun. So it's really fun to see all the designers and, and to meet all the designers and see all the models. You know, that's the big thing. Um, let's see. So I think I'll just jump into my stitching now. I probably talked not long enough about me, but that's what long, <laughs> long as you're probably going to get. Um, but um, I do have some whips and new start. So as I mentioned, um, over the last couple weeks, I have a group that meets in Easley, South Carolina. It's about 25 minutes from me. Um, we meet, it's called Upstate Stitchers. It's a bunch of local ladies that meet kind of together. Um, and then I did have last week, last Friday night, we do our Friday night stitch group at my local shop. So, um, well, I guess I'll just show my finishes first because they're on top. So uh, the first one I started and finished since I've seen you guys was uh, Threadwork Primitives, the Bristol Sampler Pair. Um, again, Threadwork Primitives, Bristol Sampler Pair. And I have my board. I have a lot around me, so I'm hoping I'm not gonna knock anything off, but um, this was done. It was actually done on 32 count, um, so um, I did this on 32 count fabric fair ice mocha with the called for red. Um, and even though it is on 32, I don't really think it's that sparse. I just kind of wanted it to the same size as the original design. I think it turned out really cute. Um, so I have that one. And then I also started another Threadwork Primitives, the Quaker Block Print. So this one here. Quaker block print by Threadword Primitives. And actually, I stitched this one on um, 40 Count Hemingway by Needle and Flax with um, Belle Swa Old Crow. I kind of wanted to do one of the black samplers. Um, so this is my finish on that one. So that was, again, Quaker block print. I think it turned out super cute. Okay. So those are my two finishes. Not huge, but it's only been like two weeks, so not, not terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, and then um, I do have a couple of whips and new starts. So um, this was actually a whip from last year. Uh, this is Stacy Nash Harriet Brown Redwork Sampler Pin Keep. So what I didn't realize, and I should have realized, I know better. But this one's like 285 by 260. And I was looking, I found this picture because I had it like stored somewhere else and I found it and I was like, wow, that looks really different from that. Well, the ones that have stitched this know that uh, you stick the back of this too and the back first. So <laughs> um, that's a lot of stitching to put on the back. So I am not sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, I'm definitely going to stitch it and finish, you know, I don't have very much started, but luckily I didn't kind of do those squiggly lines all the way across. I kind of got down to the alphabet. Um, and so I don't know, I think I'm just going to stitch, like start here where this band is and maybe stitch down and then frame it. Or I may go ahead and do the squiggly lines too. I haven't decided, but... As you can see, it's pretty long sampler and it's it's pretty big and um, or I can make it into a large pillow. But um, that's my work whip. I started this last year, but I only had like maybe like those just little ghost lines so I could start working down to the bottom into the print so I didn't have to count so much going over and across. And I kind of um, but I did kind of get a couple rows done um, on this one. So it's very pretty. It's just a, a lot of work for the back of a piece. <laughs> um, I don't know how I feel about that. And then I did have another new start. Um, this is Sarah Barnes, The Scarlet House. So this one is done on uh, with Vicki Clayton Silks and it's actually on the card for which is 36 count old stationery from Seraphim. So 
this is my start. I'm about halfway done on it. I'm loving this one. I'm loving the colors of it. So those motifs are just beautiful in the little house. So like I said, I'm about halfway done. And that is, again, Sarah Barnes. And I'm using Vicki Clayton Silk Conversion on Old Stationery. So... Sorry guys, I have to put everything in piles. I'm a little organized or a little, <laughs> I try to be at least. Um, and then I have another little start. Um, this is actually um, the Scarlet House and Chilton, 1847. I'm doing this on 40 count needle and flax Hawthorne with the call for Belsois silks. And I put all my silks and in, in all my thread in bags. So I don't have like the beautiful thread drops that y'all show and all the threads like laying out. Mine are just going to see clear plastic bags. <laughs> I don't know how exciting that is. And I don't think I'm changing up that system because um, I'm really one of those people like I just, when I'm ready to stitch, I just want to stitch. Like I don't want to take a lot of time putting them on thread drops they're beautiful it's not that i just i just don't have a lot of time and to do that as well would be hard for me but anyway um so again this is the bell Swa silks and i'll give you an example i mean this is my threads <laughs> i don't know how exciting that would be for you guys <laughs> just to see a shiny ziploc bag um <laughs> um so this is my measly little start on Ann Chilton. But I'm loving the colors. I didn't realize I had that much orange. I mean, I've seen it before, but I didn't remember it had that much orange in it. But it's just really pretty. So those are my whips and new starts. Except for I do have one um, pretty large piece. So... Um, a lot of y'all know, I think I've mentioned it before, I am working on Let Love Rain um, by Teresa Kogut. This is um, actually a sale that I'm doing with two of my friends. Uh, it's now Hooping It Up on Instagram. Used to be Charlotte Burgess, but now it's Hooping It Up on Instagram and um, Farm Boys Love. Um, so we started this last year sometimes, um, and we've been working on it pretty diligently trying to get it done. Um, I'm getting close to a finish on it, I'm very excited to say. Uh, so I thought I would show my progress right now. It's a large piece, so um, it, I'm gonna have to kind of, you know, um, figure out how to best show it. But you can see I have the whole top done. And then the middle section. And then I am working on the flower border, I mean the flower vase right now and I had finished the entire border. So this is on 40 count Thornfield with Vicki Clayton silks. Um, let's see if I can get it all in. Ooh, can't get that one all in, that was a big one. Um, but I do actually have a video that I will insert or a photo that I will insert. I'm not sure about the end. I've never really edited before, but I'm gonna give it a go and see see how it turns out. But I do have some video and some photos of um, all three of our pieces. Um, they're very different because uh, Charlotte and um, Pam are both changing their colors. Pam's doing like a purple conversion and Charlotte's doing some oranges um, and some different colors in hers. Sorry, I'm gonna take a sip of water. I talk all day at work, so my throat's a little dry. Um, but they are um, working on theirs and they look really good. So I will put it either in this section or at the end or the beginning, who knows? Just <laughs> it's kind of how editing goes, right? You just do it whatever you want. Um, uh, I'll put all our versions in our video and of, of, of them. So. Um, I do have some fully finished um, pieces that I got back from the fi uh, finisher. Um, this is by, of course, now I can't remember her name. Um, it's Faye Rigsby, but she goes by an Instagram name, but she is a, you know, a professional finisher and you can send your items to her um, and get them finished. So 
Um, I don't have names. I think I've introduced them before. I didn't do all that, but I just kind of wanted you guys to see how adorable they are fully finished. So this is a definitely a luminous fiber arts. I just can't remember the name right now. Um, and it was done on 46 count needle and flax. I remember that dirty teacup, I believe, because Liz let me borrow the piece. Um, but it turned out super cute. Um, and I love this little sampler piece she put on there. Then I have one of the Erica Michaels berries. Um, this was the sampler berry. And this was the one that was, um, you did the letters over one. It was the smaller version. I'm going to have to stitch the big version out because it is just wonderful. But you can see this is the sampler berry from Erica Michaels. And I love how it turned out. I'm definitely going to have to stitch. Like I said, there's two in that pattern. There's a small one and a large one. The large one is doesn't have over one letters. So I'm definitely going to have to get that one. Um... This one was uh, 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 Shakespeare's Peddler um, in the Christmas Magazine. Uh, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And then she did like all the ribbon ruching on it. And then finished the back. So adorable. And then I got the Scarlet House Colonial Blooms fully finished. So, and then she made the cutest little pocket out of, so I gave her the blackbird and then she put this blackbird to kind of do a little pocket on it and it turned out so stinking cute. That Scarlet House Colonial Blooms, you can do that on black or on a lighter color and I chose the lighter color, but I love how it turned out. So cute. So those are some of my fully finished items. It's going to get messy. <laughs> Stuff everywhere. Um, I did, yeah, a lot of you have seen this, but... <laughs> I got one, so I did get one of the um, Stitch Folk uh, bags that she had some extra ones of. Um, it's beautiful. I love this fabric. I actually ended up buying the whole line to finish smalls with because it's just so gorgeous. Um, but these are a Stitch Folk bag. Um, sometimes she has extras you can watch. Her bags are beautiful. They would like the lace on them. Um, I've never had one, so I was excited to finally get one. Um, okay, so what I thought I would do now is, um, I'm going fast again, but <laughs> I don't know how, how people get on there and talk for an hour. I, I, I don't know what I'm, what I'm messing up, but <laughs> I definitely, uh, go too fast. I think, um, hopefully the accent's not getting in the way too bad. But I thought I would kind of go through, uh, do a designer spotlight. So um, as I mentioned, I've been stitching oh, over 20 years. Um, and I have a lot of finishes, uh, fully finished, not fully finished. Um, it, I have a, what I call a drawer of shame. Um, <laughs> just like a lot of people do that are just finished objects, but not fully finished. Um, I do have a framer here pretty close to me. He's about 45 minutes away. Great prices. So I do try to take items to him a good bit, but um, with it being a little farther away, I kind of got to plan it accordingly. But um, so what I thought I would do is I have pieces, like I thought I would do a designer spotlight and, you know, just show certain pieces that I have stitched or have been given from certain designers. Um, some are, uh, fully finished, some are not, some are in vignettes, uh, you know, uh, it's all kinds. So I thought my spotlight designer for this time would be, uh, Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Um, a lot, a lot of people know that, follow me, know that I love to stitch Brenda stuff. I love her smalls. Um, I just think she makes the cutest pieces that you can use decoratively. Um, uh, so I have... A good number I even made up made a list of them uh, so I can remember the names that's a hard part it's hard to remember the names of stuff you stitched <laughs> over the years but uh, even or like who the designer is I have some pieces hanging at my local shop and I'm like who's that design I know I stitched it but who's that designer um, so you have to do some like interesting Google searches to try to figure out who stitched what <laughs> you know or, or who designed what 
you you wouldn't think so, but you know, anyway. So, um, you know, I, some designers, I don't have as many like fully like finished pieces of them because I might just have one or two of their designs that I've stitched, but I'll just combine those in the future. And um, I hope you kind of like this segment. I, I kind of like to go back and love to see like stitching, even if it's not available. Um, most of these are, but I like to go back and look and kind of see what people are showing um, and see what people have stitched over the years. So I'll get started. So I think the first one that I have is um, Stay Home and Stitch. This is uh, the Brenda pattern that she came out with during COVID. Um, so this was finished by my good friend, Jen Purple Stitcher. I'm not going to do that the whole time because she's finished a lot for me. Care, uh, Faye Rigsby's finished a lot for me. Um, and I don't know if I can remember them all. <laughs> um, Jen's are usually football, so I can kind of remember, but, uh, but this is, uh, let's stay home and stitch. Um, and again, that's Jen Purple Stitcher. I, I try to remember to say always the Instagram name as well, because um, if you're like me, I, I know a lot of people by their Instagram name or how I've interacted with them over the years and not always, you know, fully know their first name. So, um, so this is the first one. Uh, I'll show the back too. Just a really cute uh, stripe, blue and white. Um, so I have the PA Dutch Pen Keep. I'm just gonna try to go in order if I can. Um, that would be easier for me. If I can't, then I'll figure it out. But this is a drum, again, uh, PA Dutch Tomato Pen Keep with a little strawberry. Such a cute finish. And I, I, I think I've said this before, I'm not a finisher. Um, I appreciate it. I, I think people do beautiful work. Makes me very nervous to finish. So, um, I have the the good company of a lot of good friends. Um, so I have these. These are the keeper of the pins. So there's several designs. I have them in this lovely kind of box that I got in Amana at one of the retreats I was at. Um, but I have showed these before. But um, so I finished all these with this red tomato fabric on the back. They are so adorable. So I don't, I can't remember all the names of them. Sorry, guys. I know it's in the Keepers of the Pins book, though. It is with that needle and thread. She's so, you can see she has a scissor finish on the back. I love when they put like a little, I like a little, um, charms and stuff on the back with buttons. And then also in here, I do keep the PA Dutch pin keep in here. And then I also have the I collect as well. So those are super cute. I'll put them back in the little container. But it, this sits on my cabinet. I do have a video. Someone asked, my, I have like a pottery barn cabinet. And um, I'm going to put a video at the end of this um, showing kind of in detail what's in that cabinet. But that sits in my office all the time. So. Ah, timber. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, I have one that's a stitch in time. This was uh, given to me by a friend years ago. Super cute. This comes like, a, I think, a needle book. Um, beautiful pattern there. Okay. Uh, you've seen these before, but I just got these finished recently done, but joy and good cheer. And then, um, oh, I left one on the wall. I have coming to America, <laughs> so I can't pause either. Uh, maybe I'll take a picture and insert it. Um, coming to America, which is a Brenda Gervais. Um, a lot of y'all seen it. My boat got lost in Jamaica somewhere. It took me a while to finish it. Uh, but I did finish it, and it's hanging on the wall. It's a beautiful finish. <laughs> but um, I forgot to get it off the wall. <laughs> um, uh, be ye thankful. 
it, but it's so funny because I have these things all over my house. So you should have seen me trying to collect them and find them all and be like, did I, what, did I snitch that one? <laughs> um, uh, I do actually have, I'm going to save that one. I'm going to save my um, kind of fully framed pieces. Uh, I do have a few, let's just go ahead and finish these. So this one is, um, I don't know if I go out of order, we're probably not going to be able to figure it out. Yeah, that's probably not smart. Are all y'all screaming at me what this one is right now? I don't even know if I wrote this one down. This is a pumpkin headed guy, girl. <laughs> Super adorable. <laughs> I don't know that I wrote down what this one was. Uh, I didn't get a few more out too. I have a few Christmas ornaments as well. And I forgot those too. Uh, this is Souvenirs of the Heart Autumn. Love this finish. This is over one on 28. I'll insert those pictures of those Christmas ornaments um, as well. I swear my brain. Um, this is another Souvenirs of the Heart uh, Home for Christmas. Oops. And again, it's over one on 28. They're so cute. I don't love stitching over one. I, I can do it and I have done it, but it's not my favorite thing. My, I don't think my stitches lay as pretty, but um, it's still a lot of fun to do. Um, I have um, Happy Birthday America, which is done on this adorable little stand. And then it has this uh, sampler fabric. And then... That's the finish. And then this is how Jen finished the bottom, purple stitcher. So adorable. I, I love this one. So, happy birthday, America. Um, I have a red, white, and bloom. I have, mo I, have all, I have all these done, but one of them I did a little too short to finish it. So, um, there was no save in that one, but I have, uh, this is from the Red, White, and Bloom book. And then I finished them with either the red and white stars, or you'll see the blue. One's finished with Demi Blue. They are so cute. They sit in a little um, metal tray with a bunch of uh, patriotic pieces. So Red, White, and Bloom. And then a little sunflower. And the last one's a little watering can with an eagle on it. I have to restitch him because there's no, like I said, I just, I, I started him at StitchCon and I wasn't thinking and I just got my fabric too close. Um, I don't do that a lot, but <laughs> apparently I was excited and having a good time and uh, kind of messed that one up. Okay, um, so the next one is Lessons of Abyssadarian. So, I have this one in this really pretty metal tray. So again, this is all over one on 28 count. So I'm gonna get these out one at a time. So this is the little horn book. And then there was a little strawberry. Um, and then, of course, you had, like, the all of the up to G, like A to G. And that's kind of the backing fabric I chose for all of these. And then H through K, the little girl. And then L through P. A little gentleman. I just, this series has always been one of my favorites. I think this is the first thing I got professionally finished. Um, but like I said, it was all over one on 28. 
Uh, there's sometimes you just kind of got to do them. And then RCV, I love this one with the American flag down the house. And I love the finish with a little strawberry on it. And again, all these have the same backing fabric. And then the last one, the W, X, Y, and Z. So cute. Um, so those again kind of just sit in a vignette on my nightstand in my bedroom. And that's Lessons of Abyssidarian. Let's see what's next. Uh, so I'm going to show some of these. These are finished, but not fully finished. One day they'll get fully finished, but. Um, so this one is Easter Parade. I stitch bunnies sometimes. <laughs> That's an inside joke with me and Liz because she said she doesn't stitch bunnies. I do sometimes. I think they're cute. <laughs> so Easter Parade. I have another bunny up there of hers too. Spring Frolic, frolic that I forgot to pull down. So, oh well. Uh, then this is a hoopla, a holiday hoopla Easter, I believe. I mean, I just have to put this in the hoop. Wait there. I mean, even I can do that, but. Isn't he cute? Okay. Um, then we have, uh, these are the, um, uh, basket full of autumn. <laughs> basket full of autumn. Some of these just don't want to cooperate, do they? <laughs> um, love this one. It's so cute with the little pumpkins. Oh, some of the pumpkins have faces and some of them don't. See that one right there? So stinking cute. Um... And I'm sorry, I don't know the fabric I did these on. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, this one is the January wordplay. That one so needs to get finished. January wordplay. I love all the wordplays. I have them all, but I haven't stitched them all. I think if we ever stitched everything we wanted to stitch, we'd be doing good, right? Um, this one is one for the crows. So cute. <laughs> um, this one is Witch's Night Out. Another one that should go in a hoop is Santa's Tree Farm. He's in a long oval hoop. Um, and then I have all of the, um, they were the uh, snowball booklet. So again, I can't remember their individual names, but they are so cute. I'm probably going to get these finished next, I think. This is one of my favorite ones of all of them. The three, the little family. Snowman on a sleigh. Winter Wonderland. Might be better to show these on the white side. Little snow globe. Let's snow. There was a lot in this book. 
but they were all so cute. I did them all. And then the last one, the little, um, like a little candy house. Ah, you don't want to see my bags, guys. No, thank you. Don't look at my bag. Um, so this one is a basket full of winter time. <laughs> I really want to show you my bags. Basket full of winter time. This one is summer in Baltimore. They finish this like a round box. So cute. I'm going to do all these. I just got out of time, but I'm going to do them all. I love those. I love the autumn one. I love them all. I, and then it has like a little need, uh, scissor fob with it. And then this one is an older one. Um, I think I'm going to take this one to the framer when I go. Um, but this is, um, what is the name of this guy? Wow, I cannot remember. Oh, I think it's like Snowman Globe or something like that. But she has this one and then she has a Santa, a Santa as well. And then this is the one I just finished that I absolutely love. I was at the Dying to Stitch Retreat when she released this one. Um, I didn't do well on <laughs> the first winter solace, but I got it before the second one. Um, but a lot of people are stitching this. It's absolutely beautiful. Light of winter. Get a little closer in the house. So dear. Such a beautiful border. That's definitely going to the framer. Um, here soon. And then I have several that I forgot to grab. I have a spring frolic, spring frolic, can't say that, a bunny hill. I have the cat in the moon, um, I, coming to America, um, and then all the ornaments that I have done. So I'll put a picture in a, of those. And then I actually have a few framed pieces. Sorry. Um, first one is Liberty House. So I do put glass on everything. Um, I know that makes it a little hard reflection wise, but hopefully you can see it pretty good. Still, I try to make it bright enough so where we could see these kinds of things. Um, I have October 31st. Oh, I do have the little pumpkin fabric and then it has the little stitch crow on it. Jen did this one for me and finished it and actually even stitched a little crow for me. I'm that kind of friend, but isn't it cute? Oh God, I love, I love how she did these fabrics and then the different pumpkins and shapes in them. Um, oh, I forgot about this guy. Um, I think this is Merry Old Soul. He is done actually on 46 count. As well, I, I normally stitch on 36, 40. Um, sometimes I, I can do 46 too. Um, this is just what was in the kit and the call for, so that's what I did. And he's so cute how little he is. And then he's got a little snowflake and the sticky on the back. And then I actually also have um, this one. I don't know what this one's called though. I couldn't find it. Um, I'm gonna call him Candy Cane Santa. He He's definitely done it around, but I had them finish it as a drum just to have a little something different. 
Um, it is really cute. Uh, this was actually finished. It, um, I take some stuff normally when I go to SitchCon for keepsakes. So um, they actually, Susan Coates actually finished this one. I can't remember which other ones. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, and then let's see, I have a few more frame pieces. This one I actually just got from the framer. Um, this is Regina Hobble. Love the birds. It's kind of a ghost sampler, but it's so beautiful. I love the red lines kind of running down and framing up close to them. Um, that was kind of my choice to do, but it's so pretty. And then, um, I have Noel Sampler. So, this is my Noel Sampler. This is on my mantle this year at Christmas. I loved having it up there. Uh, little people and the reindeer not that old 2022 which is pretty good for me um, so that's kind of all of my um except the ones i gotta insert pictures that i forgot um but uh that's kind of all of my uh spotlight um finishes from a designer uh i'm just kind of calling it you know spotlight corner <laughs> i have to make notes sorry that was a lot so i think there was around th 30 plus finishes right there um not counting like the ones that have like four and five in them um so as you can tell she's a designer i really like to stitch most of the times they will not be that long um but that's kind of my designer spotlight for this week i, I hope you enjoyed it um so i'm already at 40 minutes but i think i'm gonna go ahead and just keep going I kind of got some grief about my last video being short. I ain't going to say who did it, but <laughs> no, it's funny. It's all in humor. Um, it, it was short. As you can see, I need a lot of content because apparently I go fast. Um, so what I kind of did last time was I talked about my 24 projects that I kind of wanted to focus on in 2024. Um, there are mainly large samplers uh so or larger pieces so i kind of wanted to have some smalls in the mix and as you can see i have a lot of christmas a lot of winter a lot of seasonal smalls so i'm kind of trying to spread the love a little bit and do some other maybe smalls that are um all the time or you know uh just just change it up a little bit so what i did is i kind of went through and pulled out some smalls um, that I kind of wanted to look at and focus on, uh, for 2024. Um, it's just easier, I, you know, since I've been stitching for quite a while, I do have a stash. I'm not going to lie. I think we all do. Um, so I like to kind of pull them out at the beginning of the year and then I don't go through my stash and get kind of overwhelmed and waylaid. Um, now things change. Market's coming as we know. Um, I did actually have for my 2024, I did not, I had this one somewhere else when I was doing all that. Thankful, grateful, blessed. Um, I, this one's coming, I have it fully kitted on old stationery. Uh, this is a kit from Country Sampler, but, uh, this one's going to be moved into the, to the 24, um, because I love the sampler. It's got to get done this year started something <laughs> and I may have more than 24 uh, does that bother y'all <laughs> um I love this I know I just said I'm not going to do as many seasonal but here I go got to get some pumpkins in there so when pumpkins glow I love just these two guys and I'm uh, or guy and girl sorry I might just do them um I don't know like I I, I don't know if I'm gonna do it I'll probably do it all but I can't decide because I really love just just those two and just getting them in there. Um, I when I was at the um, uh, hobby house retreat with Scarlet House and Need a Work Press, we did get this you know home uh, where my samplers are. I love this design. I'm gonna definitely be hopefully stitching that soon. Um, Snow Magical. 
as you can see, <laughs> for Brenda Drouet. Uh, this is actually also kitted uh, for country, from Country Sampler. As you guys know, I think I told you, I'm, I love a good kit. Um, Winterberries and Pine. This was, uh, she put this on her website and I think it sold out. I think, I don't know, if she, I'm sure she'll release it again, but it is, again, fully kitted, which always makes my life easy. Uh, Reindeer Games. I love these designs, and they came with, like, all three of the little wood pieces. I just think they're such a cute little idea. Um, Home Sweet Home. by Brenda Gervais with that needle and thread. I can see I have it fully kitted as well. Um, I've done the other two, so I really, and the other, the, the fourth one is just coming out now, Hill of the Spring. So I really wanna get that one too. Um, I would love to do this one for my, my um, kind of tomato themed uh, cubby, uh, my Pottery Barn cubby downstairs. I just love this little, Think he's so cute you can leave it out all the time again i mentioned these before these are the this is the winter in baltimore and this one is the to quote shakespeare love that one as well i don't think i own autumn and bought uh, autumn in baltimore which I love fall, so it's kind of surprising, but I can't seem to find it. I need to look at my stash again and see if I have it or not. Um, more bunnies. <laughs> uh, Spring Awakens by Brenda Gervais. I have this one fully kitted as well. Look at that backing fabric. I was thinking adorable in that. That's what I love about country sampler kits. And then the Robin Robins are here. Again, another, as you can see, fully kitted. Another adorable backing fabric. Um, one second while I'll put all these back in here before they go sliding off the table. Um, I did just keep these in this cute little decorative box that I thought was really adorable. Um, it just sits on the shelf. And like I said, then that way I don't have to kind of go through stash. I do have a lot of winter, kind of small, still pulled out. I did a Christmas for a full year, um, not last year, but the year before. And I really made great progress on, because Christmas, I'm a very in-seasonal stitcher. And it was hard because Christmas it was so busy, I never had time to like actually finish any Christmas pieces. So um, I really tried to focus on, you know, just doing some Christmas for the whole year. And I, like I said, I got a lot done that year at Christmas theme. Um, but I always kind of want to pick up a small at Christmas. Um, you know, still want to kind of embrace that. I do have a few more. So this was um, uh, United We Stand, a Blackbird design mattress pad. I love this design. You can see I have it fully kitted. Um, I look, I got this one. This is um, another Blackbird Design Drum Lady Liberty. I have a few of the. Um, Wind Dye Needle and Thread uh, Holiday Hoopless. So I have, I said it just needs to go in a hoop. I have July in here. Let's see what other ones I have. I have July. Love this one. I have the St. Patrick's Day one. And the Valentine. They stitch up so fast, and they're so cute when they're done. Um, let's see. The next is that same kind of um, 
the books that I showed with like the tomatoes and the, the um, winter ones and the 4th of July ones. This is Oh Lucky Day. These are so cute as well. It's in a nice hefty bag. Made me fancy. Uh, this is a bag that was done by my good friend, Purple Stitcher, Jen. She makes beautiful bags. I could have stuff myself in that instead of <laughs> instead of hefty. Um, I started this, I have probably like 10 stitches on it, but I've done Hello um, Summer and Hello Winter. So I'd like to get Hello Fall done. Spring stitching is probably not my favorite of all the stitching, but get another beautiful bag. Let's see what this one holds. Oh, this is a, I don't have the copy. I mean, I don't have the, the front of it, but this is home of a needle worker. Um, I love that pattern. It's, I don't want to show it because it's just the pattern, but it's a little house, home of the needle worker. I mentioned this. This is, I showed the one finished, but this is the other sampler berry. So this is the one with the lettering over one. And then this is the other one. So I'd like to get that one finished as well. Um, so as you saw, I finished Regina Hobble, um, the sampler. So I'd like to do the small, which is these adorable birds. I'm not fully candid as well. Um, back on the berry theme, I just think these berries are just so adorable. But this is uh, St. Nick's Berry by Erica Michaels. I have several of these. I just need to get them out and get them done. But they be cute. I think he says believe on them. And then just a couple more. Um, I love this Scarlet House. Um, uh, needfuls. Always love this pattern. I just need to get going. And then, um, from the Oh La La book, Blackbird Designs. I have two that I love. And I love all Blackbird. <laughs> I could, I could stitch it all and I'd be so happy. But... I love this a French pin cushion. And then there's a red sampler in here, a small red sampler that I love. Damn it. Well, there's several <laughs> red samplers in here. This whole book is good. Um, Trying to find that one. Sorry guys, can't seem to find it. I think it's just, this is, here is a book. This is a great book. I'm sure most of you own it. Cause you know, gotta buy all the Blackbird. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's kind of the 24 smalls that I'm thinking about uh, until market hits and then all my plans go out the window. Uh, no, I, I actually try to do pretty good. Um, I do have a little bit of haul, nothing major. Um, I got some threads that I needed. So as I mentioned, uh, for at home, I was going to do the Vicki Clayton silks. So this is kind of how her silks come with the conversion on the front and then all the names, but you can kind of see all the colors. So this is the, for the with thy needle and thread at home sampler. 
Um, this one is in, in Heaven and Nature Sing, Kathy Barrett. Love that pattern. So this is her, again, conversion for it. And then I got the Mary Ann Cobb um, conversion. I think that's that orange that Carol's talking about. We'll have to see. I'll probably just use it, but... And then um, I did get some threads. I don't know how exciting that is, but um, for some samplers that are some of my 24s. So just some thread. You always need thread. Even, even, even the hundreds of threads that I have, I always need a different thread. Um, I wasn't going to stitch this. I've debated this. This is uh, Blackbird Design Feast of Friendship. It has like 4 million colors in it. But I have a good friend who's stitching it really on 40 count, uh, hooping it up. And it's tiny and it's adorable. And so I was like, oh God, I need to just go ahead and get that. So I went ahead and got it. Not this year, but now I'm gonna live to be 300. So I'm totally fine. Um, and then, uh, finally a farm girl and oh I'm sorry finally a farm girl um and a stitchy Linda they mentioned me as well on my floss tube sorry guys that was totally my on their floss tube now my floss tube on their floss tube sorry about that but she was stitching a reindeer roundup and I love this little preschooler one so I'm excited I'll see them at StitchCon so be good um and then there's a couple um I got a couple Brenda because why not but uh, I did the Cupid sampler. And the key to my heart. And then I didn't have this pattern um, where the bittersweet blooms. I don't know why I didn't have this pattern, but they had it and it was cute. So I bought it when I bought everything else. Um, I guess I would show a couple things more um, my stitching journal. So as I mentioned, a couple people asked me questions about it too. So I use um, a Sadie Stickers. It's a B6 planner, uh, sticker planner. And so uh, if you go online, Sadie Stickers sells these. She sells these binded and not binded. She sells them dated and not dated. Um, but what what's, we do sticker wise is we kind of take them and, and use sticker kits to kind of decorate them. Um, very similar to Book of Days, but just a, a, a little more themed kits, I would say. So like this is my February sticker layout. If you guys can see that. Um, and they're all like, see, rose gold, gold, or and then for my weekly kits, so I went ahead and just uh, kind of loaded in uh, my February. I uh, see, I did my January. I'm trying to think when I last showed you guys, but um, kind of here is my February kits for the week. So this is like this week. Um, and then the boxes, I just put what I'm stitching on, what I'm working on, or if I got haul, or if I worked on my stitching journal, those kinds of things. Um, this is another weekly spread that I did. I try to go ahead and do the month if I can. Makes it a little easier on me, but I go ahead and do the month. Um, again, another week of February. And then this is kind of the last week of February. But if you go on Sadie Stickers, you can watch her. You can watch Shantae Plans. She's kind of where I got the B6, the smaller, because the, they have larger ones of these too. But I didn't really want to log everything and my stitching. I wanted to kind of keep my stitching separate because um, it really helps me at the end of the year kind of focus on what I've been doing, you know, things like that. And then what I do is at the end of the month, I do like a summary page where I do like any new starts or any finishes 
and then I just kind of write them in here. So like you can see for January, January, I did kind of all my starts and all my finishes. And then um, what I did is I actually started kind of, I think it was Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher said that she does, like she puts like how many days it took her to stitch something. I can't do that on the old stuff, the old whips, but like if I just kind of pick it up and stitch it and put it down, um, I can kind of label the number of days I kind of worked on it. So I did add that this year. We'll see how far I go with that. Um, just something fun to kind of know. Um, but that is my sticker journal. And like I said, I do kind of do it for the whole month, which is nice. And then I do actually have like a small, just a pocket journal. Uh, they have these in all sizes. They're great. Um, I love this journal because you can um, actually like, not only does it have like monthlies in it, but it has like the weekly sections here but then it has all this note section. So like when I'm writing down like fabric and thread and all those detail, detail things that you want, I can kind of put that all in here and have it just in one little spot. I did the smaller one. I have a larger one for work and I really love it, but I just got this from Amazon. It was perfect. Um, so that's all, that's kind of my sticker journal. So I guess the only other thing that I was gonna kind of talk about, and I know this is a long one, so, um, <laughs> but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And you can pause me. But um, so I, in my previous floss tube, we kind of talked about, um, we called it Stitching in True Crime. And I kind of talked about like what I was watching or what I was listening to podcast wise. I know a lot of us like True Crime. I always do this kind of at the end, but I listen to other things. It's not all true crime. Um, so I, I'm always like, when I'm stitching, I'm always listening to something. I'm always watching something, watching, uh, you know, watching barely. Um, but I listen a lot to a lot of things. So I thought I'd kind of talk about what I've been kind of listening to, what I've liked. Um, so kind of um, a new podcast uh, my friend Lisa gave me, which was Who Killed JFK? A really good podcast. It's by Rob Reiner and um, Soledad. I can't remember her last name. Uh, great storytelling. Uh, you know, he wrote Princess Bride. You got to love that man. Uh, so uh, it, it's just really interesting them kind of breaking down JF, J, JFK assassination. Um, I listen to that podcast. I listened to a couple other podcasts, but none of them really stuck. I listened to The Estate. It was okay uh and uh but I really that was really the best one I've kind of listened to um and then I also listen now a, a lot to um Wicked Words uh so it's by Kate Winkler Dawson she does Wicked Words Tenfold More Wicked and Buried Bones all of them are great podcasts um so Tim uh, Wicked Words is more she's interviewing like authors of different books that have written about a case. So they're really familiar with the case. She's asking them questions about it. You know, um, it's super interesting. And she does, she has a great voice. Um, so if give her a try, Wicked Words and uh, Ten Four More Wicked or Buried Bones. Ten Four More Wicked was her first one. And it was kind of, uh, she used, she and, and the Buried Bones, they kind of talk about old cases, um, really old cases, um, like turn of the century. Uh, so I did watch American Nightmare on Netflix. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. I didn't know what I believed at first when it first kind of started and kind of came on. Um, but uh, it, it's really good. It reminds me a lot of, there was a show a couple years ago called Unbelievable on Netflix as well. It's based on a true story. This is a true story, but that was based on a true story. And if you haven't watched Unbelievable, you should you should definitely watch it. Uh, it, it was a great, great show. Uh, and then I have been watching Criminal Record on Apple. It's a British, uh, uh, cop show, you know, crime show. Uh, very good. I've enjoyed it. Um, and then I, probably most of you have watched this, but if you haven't, you should. It's on Netflix. I'm sorry, it's on Max. 
but it's the curious case of Natalia Grace and then Natalia Speaks. Uh, wow. I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Just, wow. Just watch it. Let me know what you think. It, it's, it's unreal. Uh, yeah, that's all, all I can say. <laughs> um, and then I did listen to a couple of books, uh, The House We Grew Up In. It was very interesting. It was kind of like about the mom was a, kind of a hoarder and kind of how they all dealt with that. Um, um, so that was a really good book. So that's kind of everything that I got. Um, I hope I entertained you a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, again, thanks everybody for joining, for subscribing, for commenting. I've really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you can tell I, I, I love to cross stitch. It, um, it brings me so much joy. The community has brought me so much joy following people on Instagram. I get inspired every day. Um, so, you know, I just, again, want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into the fold. Um, <laughs> it's been great. Um, and that's really all I have. I, I've got to clean up this mess now. Whew hope this video stays. Um, so, you know, uh, thanks again and uh, comment, subscribe, and, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I'll gladly try to answer anything that I can. I th hope everyone has a good evening. Uh, thanks again and, um, you know, hope to see you soon. So in my last video, a few people asked for me to show my stitching cabinet in a little more detail. So this is the kind of famous pottery barn cabinet that a lot of us stitchers have and love to decorate. Uh, mine does change uh, just depending on the season or the time, but this is kind of how it's decorated now. It usually stays this way through summer, unless I change it up at all. Um, but first is um, a Plum Street pattern called Tomato Dame. Uh, this came from a local needle workshop um, in Kansas that closed. Uh, my friend decided to send it to me at Christmas since it kind of matched the overall theme of my tomato cabinet. Um, the next stitching piece is JBW Designs, Eliza's French Bird, 1849. Again, that was a stitching exchange piece that I got from a friend. Um, the next is uh, Plum Street, My Peaceful Home. Uh, that's finished in a drum. Um, next is uh, Heartstring Sampler Acorn House. Uh, these were the Brenda Gervais tomatoes that she gave the fabric and the pattern, and I had a friend finish those for me. Uh, next is a With Thy Needle and Thread, um, a stitch in time. Again, another exchange with a friend. And then this is a heart and hand, a uh, checkered bird throwback. It came in two colorways. Um, Bosley released at market a couple years ago. Uh, next is the Autumn Salt Box House. Then I have Another heart and hand, stitching bird. Um, another Plum Street salt box house. This one was the spring. There's two patterns in those. Um, it's hard to see, but I have the Plum Street um, black cherry tart. Then um, this is actually um, a Just Nan called Running Rabbit. Um, a Blackbird Designs called Sweet Summer Come Again. A friend gave me that. Um, this one is uh, Brenda Gervais with that needle and thread. Uh, stay home and stitch. And then I do have, um, it's uh, something that I received or got in Amana. A gentleman makes these. So it has all of the keepers of the pins with that needle and thread the PA Dutch tomato pin keep, and then the I collect pillow. Again, all from with thy needle and thread. So I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.